WTF. What's that film? This is where we attempt to provide some relief for those of you who really want to remember a film but can't quite remember all the endings. You know the sort of thing. Yeah. It's a drama set in a blanket factory or maybe it's a paper mill in Somerset or is it uh, the Long Dock? In, uh, <laughs> it's, in, it's either France or Devon, maybe it's Greece. It stars a kind of female Pete Postlethwaite who has a son who drives a red or pink or grey pickup truck or sports car very quickly through a side street. It could be a country lane. The key scene involves a man who looks like John Craven um, admonishing a child dressed in some kind of national dress with a hedgehog. Is it phase four? Almost certainly. Screenplay Mayo Simon. Send as much of the detail as you can. Mayo at bbc.co.uk because it does help. Uh, we can do this live as this is live at 18 minutes past the Big Boss hour at four o'clock. You can text 85058 should you fancy this. Mayo at bbc.co.uk. This is not to test Mark. This is to test everybody else. Except we all know what it's actually to test Mark. Last week, Heather Smith begged for relief. Late 80s or 90s, heist movie with a, tist, uh, with a twist, set in a small town somewhere, could be America or Canada. Young couple learnt that a young man had a valuable coin or possibly medal collection. Yeah. Uh, and they were going to steal it. Then she slept with the owner of the medal collection or maybe a coin collection. But somehow the tables were turned and they ended up being held captive. OK. I mean, it's exhausting. Yeah. Um, Rupert Morgan's... No ants. No ants anywhere. Rupert Morgan's Wicks and many others. It's the brilliant Best Laid Plans from 1999, starring Alessandro Nivola, Reese Witherspoon and Josh Brolin, set in the small town of Tropico. Nivola's character must settle a debt with some violent criminals. An old college acquaintance, Josh Brolin, comes to town and stays alone in a friend's house. Nivola finds that the house holds what look like very rare old $5 bills from Lincoln's time. More specifically, they say that the note is a stay of execution and it bears Lincoln's signature. Wow. Can I say something about this? I've just looked it up because I was listening to that and thinking, I don't know that I've seen Best Laid Plans. And I was looking at the date of it and it's 1999, or as you referred to it, my wilderness year. That's right. Because that was, the, of... that was the year when I had left you yes. at Radio 1, but had not yet been saved, career saved by you. Correct. At Radio 5. The wilderness year. So I think I might not have seen Best Laid Plans. I'm, I'm not sure. It's entirely possible that I've seen it and indeed introduced it and forgotten about it. So here's a brand new one. Okay. Um... Let's see where we go with this. Simon and Mark, this is from Matt. I've been a listener for a little while and enjoy your WTF segment, so I hope you can help me. Early 2000s on Film 4, I saw some of a Chinese film that has baffled me since. OK. The opening premise, I think, was that of a man on a train running through a futuristic city. And there's a scene no of him piece, no? sitting in the train looking unhappy with a voiceover. I don't think he's unhappy about the voiceover. I don't think he's complaining about the voiceover. He's just Where's unhappy. this film from? Well, it's some kind of, well, Matt says it's a Chinese film. Is it 2049? I haven't even got to the end okay, of the first on. sentence. No, OK, go on. Anyway, he's looking unhappy, but the movie quickly flashed back to his life as a police detective in a modern-day city. His name is Milo, and I clearly remember one humorous scene where the detective and his partner wanted a small-time criminal to give them some vital information, but he wouldn't. Rather than threaten him, they sat down at a street cafe with him handcuffed and started eating. Quickly, a passerby who's involved with the criminal and doesn't recognise the detective comes up to the table and starts talking about some shady money he owed them. The handcuffed man hurriedly shoes him away, not wanting to be implicated in front of the detective. Detective. And this happens two more times with him getting more distressed before he gives in and agrees to give him some information. I don't remember anything else about it, sadly, including how the futuristic train was involved, but WTF was that film. OK, I mean, I'm sure it isn't that, but the thing that I was thinking, not 2049, which is Blade Runner 2049, was 2046, which is the sort of, you know, non-sequel sequel to Mood for Love, which is uh, Hong Kong, France, Italy, China, Japan. I mean... That was just because you said train and future. So 2040, but I don't, I don't know whether the rest of that matches up. It's a long time ago. I saw this in 2003, four at Cannes, and I think that's the only time I've seen it. That was the only thing that leapt to mind, and I bet it isn't one car wise 2046. If that, that has it. rung any bells with you, 20, uh, um, uh, not 28, 5058 on the text, you can email mayo at bbc.co.uk. If that WTF suggestion has uh, rung any bells yeah. at all, uh, Milo was the character, futuristic city, looking miserable on a train, that kind of thing. OK. You get the idea. Yeah.